Welcome to a special edition of the Barcelona Podcast brought to you by the Blue Wire Podcast Network. I'm Jay Hilton, and the reason this is a special edition is because, at least on YouTube, we finally hit 20,000 subscribers. And after that kind of milestone, I figured, what a better way to celebrate than to talk about something I usually don't talk about here on the channel. We're going to have some fun today talking about kits and jerseys and a little bit of a ranking that I usually don't do either. So I can get to 30,000 or maybe 100,000. Well, I still have a channel at that point. Who knows? But maybe sooner than later. So subscribe to the channel. That's a big help for me. And if you are one of my regular listeners, that is totally okay. I know there are more than you that actually watch on the video. So if you're one of the regular listeners, this is one of those rare examples where I would say that it would be better with the visual aspects. Now, whether you're listening or watching, the fun with today's program is going to be just how much I think a lot of people are going to disagree with me. There's going to be a lot of bias in this show. I'm not really taking into consideration the socks and the shorts as part of the combination. And if you're a fan of goalkeeper kits, this is probably not a safe space for you. And if you did just find this video and didn't really know about me before because of this ranking, not only should you like this video and subscribe, but you can also go down into the description and I have a timestamp for when the actual ranking begins because we have some stuff to go over first. Because for the rest of you that didn't skip ahead, you know that I have to start with the history section because while it is a bit disputed, there is an official account from the club as to what they go with. And that's about as gospel truth as you get. But because of the internet, that isn't really the gospel truth to everybody else that it should be. The Blue Grana meeting Blau and Grana, blue and red, have been Barcelona's colors since the very second meeting of the club on December 13th, 1899. At the first meeting, the name FC Barcelona was agreed upon, but it was the second meeting when the blue and red, plus white shorts, which the club wore for the first 10 years, were chosen. So before we get into the truth, let's throw out some of the theories from the start, which have since been debunked. One early theory is that a player, Kamamala, chose the colors, but the problem was that Kamamala didn't debut until 1903. So that's a little bit of an oopsies, throw that one out. And then there was the one that said they were chosen by Gamper based on two points of the pens that the accountants used, blue and red, but that's also a bit of nonsense. As recently as 2008, and still all over the internet, I see that Barcelona got their colors from FC Basel in Switzerland. But Emma Gamper, Juan Gamper's own granddaughter, has said that there isn't a lot of credence to that because her father's teams in Switzerland were Excelsior and Zurich, which he founded. He did play for Basel, but that was only for a short time, and also put a pin in that because we're going to return to that later. With all these different stories, there is a best version of this story. There were three people at that meeting, being Juan Gamper and the two brothers, Frederick Arthur Witte and Ernest Witte, that are at the center of our story. Frederick Arthur's grandson, Michael Witte, and Gamper's grandson, Manel Gamper, created the best hypothesis taken from familial accounts. For the club's 75th anniversary, Frederick Arthur's son, Frederick, and Mikel's father, reached out to Liverpool about the merchant tailors in Crosby, Liverpool which is where Frederick Arthur had studied. At that point, he was given the answer that the school's colors in the late 19th century were in fact blue and maroon, worn by the rugby team, and worn by the Witty Brothers. So the agreed-upon version is that the Witty Brothers likely pitched the idea for those colors, and Gamper, who had worn a similar jersey with Basel in 1896, liked it too. So that's what the club is going with, and that's what we're going with. From 1910 onward, the club wore the Blagrana stripes, and yes, white was predominantly the away kit up until 1974. And then that was changed to yellow until 1985 due to some team in Madrid making white kind of their thing. The team changed the away kit and then kept it for the rest of the 80s. And then from the 1991-92 season on, a jersey that is on this list, obviously it's coming. The away kit usually does change from year to year, as does now the home kit, of course. Merchandising and all that stuff throughout the 21st century has given each new drop of the third and the fourth and the away and da-da-da-da-da kits to make some money. All right, the last thing, and then we'll get to the list because I know this is a big part of it too. This is the sponsors because I'm not really focusing on the sponsors on the front at least because yes, they did not exist until 2006 with UNICEF. So it would be highly shifting my bias to jerseys that were prior to a big old name that isn't yours on the front of the jersey. After UNICEF came the Qatar Foundation, Qatar Airways, Rakuten, and now Spotify. And it should also be noted that the club has had five different club manufacturers in its history. The jerseys were made in-house until the 1960s when Mont Alt, a Catalan supplier that was also making Real Madrid, Mallorca, and Sporting Gijón jerseys, also made Barcelona's. Funny thing then, when Agusti Montal y Costa, the textile entrepreneur that owned that brand, became president of the club. His final year as president was in 1977, and the club switched to Meba, another Catalan company. 
Coppa took over for the 1992-93 season, which defined the 1990s in that look, and then Nike came in 1998 and has been the supplier ever since. As promised, since we've laid the groundwork, it's finally time to get into our list. But before we get to the top 20, I do have to hit you with the worst of the worst. Coppa in the 90s were really feeling themselves, and both the 1994-95 and 1995-96 keeper kits are definitely a product of their time. 90s fashion is coming back, that's true, but the neon magenta and yellow gradient on the 94-95 one, and then the sideways crest and everything going on in the 95-96 one, way too busy for me. Sorry, Coppa. Okay. The 2004-05 away is pretty simple. I just think that the two shades of blue, navy, and darker navy with the uneven stripes just doesn't do it for me. More famously, the checkered 2019-20 home kit looks better on Croatia than Barcelona. That's not a surprise. And the hoops from the 2015-16 home kit were breaking new ground, yes, but I think you leave the hoops to the clubs that have always done it in Celtic and Sporting CP and QPR. And my last worst of the worst is the 2021-22 home jersey. It just made the cut here because I always thought it was a bit too busy. I do get the idea. I just thought the execution could have been done better. With the worst of the worst out of the way, it's almost time for the top 20. But now I've got some honorable mentions for you that just missed the cut. So you can kind of see where I was thinking. You know I love my history. So you know that the 2019-20 Sinera kit, representing the flag of Catalonia, and taken from a 14th century legend from the 9th century, if you followed all that, about Wilfred I, the Harrys, who was the Count of Barcelona at the time, his gold shield and the blood-drenched fingers of King Charles the Bald from Wilfred's injuries. Legend is the key word here. This isn't actually legitimized history, but it is the history that the city of Barcelona does take basically as truth. And this kit does, I think, do that story justice, which, again, means I like it. The 2019-23 kit to me is also really well done. The imaging of the crest gives it both a futuristic look and pays homage to his history. And you're going to notice I'm not a big fan of Aquamarine or Teal, but this kit is nice and one of the nicer versions of it. As for the 2020-21 third, the pink with the teal accents, I think this is the best version of the pink that the club did, so it makes it here as an honorable mention. For the 2022-23 away kit, the all gold one, it was a nod to the 1992 Olympics and several neighborhoods in the city. The gold was also to be a celebration of the women's team and their success being the gold standard at Barcelona. And I'm kind of adding and editorializing that gold standard part at the end. You can't see that on the jersey that it was inspired by the women's team. But much like the teal one from a second ago, I think this jersey is both simple and complicated in all the right ways. And we're going to round our honorable mentions out with some goalkeeper stuff. The red getup from the 2020-21 season that Ter Stegen would wear away from home. I thought that was nice. I like that the keeper was able to basically wear the Barcelona colors on the road. And then the 2010-11 black and gray away is synonymous with Victor Valdez and for good reason. I do like the lightning bolts on the sleeves and the plain black body. I don't think it's overdone here. And lastly, I already dragged Kappa for their successors to the goalkeeper kit that Carlos Busquets would have to wear in the next few seasons. But the 1992-93 one is my pick from Zubieta's time. The one before it was the more iconic one, the one you've seen a lot more pictures because it's in all the first Champions League pictures with the main body being the Aquamarine. But I like that this is mainly black with everything else going on on the upper part of the shirt, including the Bagrana accents and the Kappa white stripes on the arms. Okay, so last pit stop. And I mean it, last pit stop this time until we actually get into the top 20 ranking because we are talking about Barca attire, but what about the Barcelona podcast attire and clothing and other goodies like mugs and stickers? The store is still open, and while I haven't updated the designs in a while, if enough people are liking what I've already done, I'll definitely see what I can add and come up with in the future. I do have some ideas, because when I first came up with this group, Flaminium All was not yet a star rising into what he's becoming at Barcelona, so maybe there's some ideas there. This also does help me out a lot, so thank you in advance, and you finally earned it. Time for the top 20. Let's start our ranking of 20 with the 1912-13 home kit. As I said, they started wearing the stripes in 1910. So you can basically call this the kit from the 19 teens, but in particular with photographic evidence that this is the jersey from that season in particular. This was history in the making, and that's why it's number 20 on our list. They got so much right in that time period, and that's why it still exists mainly like it does today as it did then. With 19, I'm already cheating, but this is the only other time that I cheat on this list because I basically said the three black kits are all number 19 together, all three aways. I couldn't decide between the 2011-12, the 2020-21, or this season's, the 2024-25 away, which I think I like the best of the three. I thought I'd like this year's version the best, at least on paper, but I'm not really sure now having seen it in practice. 
I think if I had to pick, I'd go with the black and gold Rakuten one. But while some people like the black and they look good in black, I just don't think that this club does. It doesn't really fit Barcelona's whole persona. And honestly, I don't think I look great in black either. So that's why any black kit was going to have to be 19 or even pushed to an honorable mention. I just did put on the list because, again, so many people look good in black. For 18, I've got my first controversial pick. The 2001-02 away jersey by Nike would look absolutely terrible on me, I promise. Most things from the early 2000s with that wide fit do look bad on me. And this off gold or copper or whatever you want to call it, the sandstorm, I do like it more on the players in pictures than in a picture or on non-athletes who don't have the shorts and socks to accent and put it all together. The color is a bit of a product of the times, and I probably won't fight you if you want to take it off this list altogether. 17 is a non-negotiable and probably should be higher. The 2008-09 away by Nike does the vertical lines right, and it does the yellow right. It's just a clean jersey that reminds me of the good times, and that nostalgia does get you on this list. I was able to put aside my nostalgia bias to keep it at 17, though, because in hindsight, I wish there was something more from the sleeves. I do think it is a bit plain Jane. But aside from that, no other notes. It's a good jersey. 16 is this season's, the 2024-25 home kit, if you're watching or listening in the future. The two colors were to honor the 125th anniversary of the club and the kit worn back in 1899. This isn't the first time we've seen the split colors, and obviously you'll be seeing more of them later. And I did have my reservations about the Spotify logo when I first saw it, but I think the gold logo of Spotify is just fine. It doesn't overwhelm even being in the middle of the shirt. The crest being in the middle is a choice too, but it's another example why I think it looks better when I see it in action on the players instead of just on a mannequin or on social media. 15 is the 2007-08 away that probably will be higher on some lists, and I totally get that. I can see, if I close my eyes, Terry Henry wearing this in my dreams, and it did mark 50 years at the Camp Nou with the wreath under the crest and the two shades of blue are pulled off really, really well. And then the yellow Nike and the UNICEF logos, which you'd feel like we're going to clash with those blues, it doesn't really take away or class as much as it should. And I also really like the collar on this one. So when it comes to away jerseys, I think this one is definitely pretty high on my list. 14 is the 1986-87 by Maba home kit. And we're already on that part of the list where everything could probably be higher if you want to fight for it. This was Maba's interpretation of the famous Blagrana design. And it's really nice. The pattern on the sleeves don't overpower the rest of the simple design. And the whole thing is obviously enhanced by a lack of a sponsor. So it does feel both modern and obviously very, very clean. 13 is the 2003-04 Away by Nike. And I actually disagreed with where I put this on the list as I'm recording it. It is funny because it's actually on this list almost primarily because of what Ronaldinho did in 2005 when it was the club's third kit at Stamford Bridge. It's an iconic shirt for both good and bad reasons, I think. So yeah, this is only 13 on the list because Ronaldinho made it look so great. But in terms of just a jersey without that memory, it's probably way lower and maybe even not even honorable mention for me. I cannot think of a worse jersey fit and color on my own body. So there is my bias. But the blue and the red horizontal stripes are a good detail. And I think there are slight details about this jersey that I don't want to get lost in how much I don't really appreciate it for what it is. For the 2021-22 away as our number 12, this light purple jersey was a celebration of the 50th anniversary of the women's team at Barcelona. And I did a whole thing on it back then. I did talk about this jersey. And here's what I'll repeat again. This jersey was really different and did actually give attention to the women's team because it was such a new look for Barcelona. So I do find that the inspirations for jersey designs so often fall flat and wind up just feeling a little performative. But I like that the club had a jersey that was almost guaranteed that it would look just as good or better on the Femini than it would the men's first team. And I think that even for the men's first team, especially Pedri, that's who I visualize in this jersey, I think it's a good look. Much like the 2003-04 away that we just talked about, our number 11, the 2011-12 home jersey, is really only on this list because this is the Messi gold record jersey. He just could not stop scoring the minute he put this jersey on. I mean, obviously he scored a lot in his career, but this one in particular was a record setter. It was a bit of a different take with the multiple stripes that transition the wider stripe as red or blue as you work down the shirt. And while I don't love, love this jersey, it also doesn't overwhelm with its different components. This jersey is probably also remembered for the Qatar Foundation on the front. But as I said, I'm not judging based on sponsors for this list. If I did, this one's obviously going to be lower. If those last few jerseys upset you, number 10 is probably definitely going to upset you because it is the 2023-24 away. Yes, the white one. Another controversial pick, but I like it. The red and blue with the old crest. White is a shade, by the way. It's not even a color. And we can't let the team from the capital take it all for themselves. 
I like that the club took a chance and reminded people of their own history wearing the white jersey. And while you won't see too many people wearing it around, obviously, I, for one, just appreciate it. And I like the fact that Barcelona went back to some of its roots. Nine is the 2005-06 kit, and we're back to memories of Arnoldinho. He was magical in this kit, and because it's Nike's last one without a sponsor, there is something so modern, yet so historic and simple about it. I could have gone without the stuff going on under the sleeves and down the sides. Very much feels like the style in the mid-2000s, and that's kind of what we were dealing with. But I think even I could pull this one off in a way that I couldn't with the other stuff in the mid-2000s. And it is probably a good thing that I've never really had a good sense of fashion because I'm generally not haunted by too many of the pictures of me in the past. Because fortunately for me, I've never really had a sense of style at all, so it's never come back to bite me. Speaking of the past, 8 is the 1999-2000 home centenary kit. I never really loved the navy of the color and the sleeves, and this season's jersey kind of rectifies those things, so that's why you haven't seen that on the list yet. But this was the risk that the club took at the time. And again, I think the lack of a sponsor really helps this jersey out. And the collar gives it that sense of history as well. This shirt probably wouldn't look good on me, but I do appreciate for what it is. And I do think a lot of people and players of the time, especially Xavi and Koku, really pulled it off well. Oh, and Carlos Puyol, of course. For seven, I've gone with the 1992-93 home and what I think is Kappa's best contribution to Barcelona's history. Even I look good in this jersey. And to me, it's a perfect blend of 1990s then and a classic look that can stand the test of time. The white Kappa stripe on the sleeves is my proof that little by little, Barcelona can dip into that unholy shade and enhance their own look using white. From Kappa's first to Maba's last, six is the 1991-92 away, and it's iconic because of the Champions League, but I think it's also just a good jersey. Orange can be a bit risky, and it sure looks better when you know Ronald Koeman was Dutch, but it's still a great look. Remember, Barcelona hadn't had too many away jerseys in their history at that point, and the orange was new. And maybe it is just the nostalgia talking, but I think this is the best orange that the club has ever done. And that might actually be the most controversial thing I could say about this jersey. We start the top five with this 1975-76 away by Maba. This jersey is Cruyff. It reminds you of Cruyff. The club was getting away from the white kits, as I was talking about. The dictatorship was gone, and Cruyff was bringing attitude back to Barcelona with this yellow getup. It takes a lot of confidence to pull off yellow, and Cruyff did it and allows Barcelona to do it. I cannot pull off a diagonal sash either, and I generally think that, like the hoops, only a few teams like Peru or River Plate have the historical cachet to pull it off. It's also something to say that they're both white with a red slash. What I am curious to see, though, if this jersey were to be modernized now today, what that would look like. For number four, it's the original, the 1899 home kit. The crest was just the coat of arms for the city of Barcelona, so that looks great. And the actual jersey was a button down all the way down. So it's not like the modernized version that Barcelona sell on their retro collection store. With the club modernizing it now, I think maybe it distorts just how good it was. But being 1899, I think the design and the ideas, it's hard to argue that it stood the test of time. So I think it was a good look then, and it's a good look now. Nothing more to say. Three is a bit inspired by four with the 2008-09 home. Again, it's probably the nostalgia talking, but Messi rising up for that header against Manchester United in the Champions League final in this jersey is one of the images of football club Barcelona in my head, and this jersey was up to that moment. Unlike other jerseys, I don't really need anything happening here on the arms. The yellow Nike swoosh, the yellow UNICEF logo, and the Barcelona crest do all the heavy lifting on a super simple design that I'm glad the club has gone back to this season. Two is the 2013-14 away kit by Nike. I do wonder how controversial this is for this spot on this list, but having lived it and was already making Barcelona content at the time, it was really groundbreaking at that moment to have a Senyera kit for the first time in the club's history. And maybe it helps that the Qatar Airways and Nike logo are in black, which basically get lost in the red and yellow stripes and allow the jersey to be doing its own thing. The additional stripes on the sleeves are somewhere between a little much and perfect, and I'll lean towards perfect for this one. And because we're so high to the top of the list, I figured near the end, I still need to give you something to talk about and yell at me about. And finally, number one is the combination of all the different things that I've been speaking about, whether it was history, whether it was the memorable moments, whether it was nostalgia, the 2010-11 home kit did all that for me. There is no more iconic kit for me, and I think any Barcelona fan who kind of really got into the club in the 21st century, I think even if Barcelona hadn't put on the greatest display of football in the Champions League final in this kit, it would still be just a perfect look. The yellow collar, the little yellow on the sleeves. I love this jersey then, and I love this jersey now. To me, this is the best jersey in Barcelona history. All right, so that's all 20 with a little bit of the worst of the worst, an honorable mention, and a history lesson, and all the good stuff that I hope you got out of this video. 
This was a ton of work and believe it or not, took months to put together. So a like on the video version, even if you just listened, would be greatly appreciated as with subscribing on YouTube or on your podcast app of choice. And since I did the first 125 years of the club in this video, I feel like at least another five or six years when Barcelona continue to come out with a fourth kit and a fifth kit and a sixth kit every year, I could take a little bit of time off before I have to make the next one. And if I am doing this by then, hopefully I'm not doing it just for 20,000 subscribers, but for 100,000 subscribers. And to help me get there, of course, subscribing, liking, doing all that stuff is a big help. But also just tuning into the regular program. It is time to get back into that for the rest of what should be a pretty exciting season this year. And as always, until next time, Forza Barca.